I'm Logan, one of the professional bicycle mechanics here at My Bike Shop. We would like to thank you for purchasing your new or new to you bike from us. I'm sure you're wondering how to get your bike from the box to out riding this weekend with your buddies. So you're gonna need a couple tools. You're gonna need a set of scissors to cut open the box and packaging, a bicycle multi-tool, a five newton meter torque wrench with a four millimeter, a five millimeter, and a Torx T25 bit. Alongside these tools, you also need a pump that works with a Presta valve. Most of our bicycles are fitted with these valves. Now that we have our basic tools together to get your bike from the box to out and riding, by the end of this video, you should feel comfortable getting your bike fully assembled. However, if that's not the case, we're here to help. Feel free to contact us, and by the end of the consultation, if you're still not comfortable getting your bike together, we may suggest that you take it to a local bike shop. To start, you want to clip the shipping straps with your scissors, cut them, remove them, and throw them away as they're not reusable. From there, you need to lift off the top of your box and set it aside. When, upon opening your box, initially you will find a handwritten thank you note and an invoice. Set these aside for reference. Next up, lift off the first layer of foam and also set that aside. It is reusable, so if you plan to travel, keep this foam. Next up, we have our wheels. Our wheels come deflated and there are two hub protectors in each wheel. Remove these hub protectors and set them aside, especially if you plan on reusing the box. With the wheel set aside, we can then remove our next layer of foam. This is going to expose the frame of the bike, the seat post and seat of the bike, and our quick release skewers for our wheels. Next, we will remove our quick release skewers from the bags that they came in. The shorter one is for the front, and we want to unscrew the end cap. And as you'll notice, there are two springs. You will remove the one spring in the same orientation that it is on the skewer, slide the skewer through the hub axle, apply the other spring to the one end, and then thread on the end cap just a couple turns. We will then take the longer skewer for the rear and unscrew the end cap, and then just like the front, we're gonna remove the outer spring along with it, install the quick release into the hub axle, reinstall the spring in the same orientation, and then thread on the end cap a couple turns. We can now set aside both wheels and start to pull the frame out of the box. Using one of the excess pieces of foam, we can lay it down to create a scratch-free work surface. Next, we will locate the seat and seat post inside the box, remove it, and set it aside. We now can take the frame and pull it out of the box and lay it down on our excess foam and can begin to get ready to, to assemble the bike. Using our scissors, we are now ready to remove the rest of the packaging from the bicycle. We can now pull back a piece of the bubble wrap and begin to carefully cut along the frame The bubble wrap goes around several times, so you may have to unravel. Discard this packaging. From there, we want to remove the bag off of the rear derailleur. We will now cut the bubble wrap off of the handlebar. Insert one of the scissors into the bubble wrap and cut along the top. There may be a piece of tape on either side here, so carefully look for that and cut it as well. Next up is the front brake. We tape along the top of here to fully enclose the front brake and bubble wrap so it doesn't get damaged during shipping. Make an incision upwards along the tape and the bag will remove from the front brake. Discard this packaging as well. 
We are now ready to remove the braces from the frame. We have one located at the fork and one located at the rear dropouts. If you take your thumbs and push, they should pop out. Keep these if you plan to reuse the box. We are now ready to install our rear derailleur. Using our five millimeter on our mini tool, we can insert that into the derailleur. Down here, there's a Phillips head screw that is actually designed to rest right here on this little lip on what is called the derailleur hanger. We want to rotate the derailleur so that that screw is not making contact yet with that lip and turn it in clockwise until it is snug. And then we can rotate our derailleur and we should feel a springing action. Standing the bike up on the foam, we can now inspect our rear derailleur installation. Looking from the inside where the wheel is, we can see where that Phillips head screw is resting right there on the derailleur hanger. And if we can rotate it back, but when we rotate it forward, it feels like it's a spring. Now that we have the bike standing up, we can rotate the stem and the fork forward and move our handlebars down to the front. Using our mini tool, we now want to remove the four bolts, or sometimes two, on the faceplate of the stem. This one, for instance, uses Torx T25, but these could also be a four or five millimeter. Our mini tool has a T25, so we will unthread these until we can take the stem faceplate off. And we wanna unthread it in a star pattern, as we will also be installing in a star pattern. We want to be careful to make sure not to lose any of the small bolts or washers that go with this process. Now that we have the stem plate removed, we can loosely install our handlebars. While raising the handlebars up and holding them with one hand, you can grab the face plate with all the bolts remaining in it and loosely thread one of the bolts in there with your hand to have it hold in place. While still holding the handlebar, grab your mini tool and start to thread in that bolt that you started. And then in a crisscross pattern, start to install the bolts until they all start threading into the stem. This way we don't lose our bolts or washers and the faceplate is gonna hold the handlebars while we do our next step. With our mini tool using the five millimeter, we can unthread the brake nut off the back of the brake. If any washers are present, they are gonna stay on the brake while we turn the fork, insert the post into the fork, and the brake nut at the back of the fork. We can then take our five millimeter, insert it into the brake nut while holding the brake center. We wanna tighten the brake nut until it is snug. Holding on the brake levers and remove them from the handlebars. You can discard these as well. Now that we have the brakes opened up, we wanna double check and see if our brake is actually opened up to receive the wheel and tire. If it is in the closed position, you will need to open it. Now that we have the front brake opened up, we can insert our front wheel into the fork, pass the brake caliper, and put the fork onto our hub axle. We want to ensure that the quick release lever is on the non-drive side and the end cap is on the drive side. Now, in order to tighten the quick release lever, we want to apply some slight pressure down, hold our end cap, and rotate the lever. And then this is a cam. So when I go to close it, I should start to feel resistance at 90 degrees. In order to adjust that, you'll turn this end cap clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen. Still while applying pressure down, we want to make sure the wheel is all the way up into the fork. I now have it adjusted so at 90 degrees, I start to get some resistance, and with my palm, I will force it closed. Now that we have the wheel installed in the front fork, we can close our front brake, give our left front brake lever a squeeze, make sure that it closes and opens fully, then we can pick up the front, spin the wheel, listen for dragging noises, 
if we are dragging on one side or the other, we would use our multi-tool with the five millimeter on the back brake nut, and you can squeeze the brake, loosen the nut, and tighten it back down, and it should be centered. We wanna double check, make sure that the gap on either side of the rim to the brake pad is the same amount. While holding the frame with one hand, ensure that your rear brake is in the open position, and then take your rear wheel, and we are now ready to install the rear wheel into the frame. By picking the frame up, we can then move the rear wheel in towards the derailleur in the frame. Then we then want to take the upper chain and make sure that it is onto the smallest cog on our cassette. We then want to lower the wheel down, making sure that it can pass through our brake. And then just like the front, we can adjust our skewer to get resistance at 90 degrees while applying pressure down, making the, sure the wheel is all the way into the dropout and fully closed with our palm. While picking up the frame, you can pedal forward. If the chain is derailed like this one, you can roll it onto the smaller chain ring and pedal backwards and then forward and the chain will then be in the proper position. With the wheel installed into the rear dropouts, we can now make sure that the brake is in the closed position. Same with the front, we wanna pick up the rear end and spin it forward, double check that our gap is same on either side and that the wheel spins freely. We're next gonna move on to installing our seat post and seat. We are now ready to install our seat and seat post. We wanna take the seat and seat post that we set aside earlier, open up the packaging, discard the packaging, take our mini tool, which commonly on C-clamps is either a four, a five, or a Torx T25, and loosen it up ever so slightly. We can then insert our seat post into the frame. And if you know your riding height, now is a great time to measure and set it right to your riding height. We then want to rotate the saddle until it is straight. Tighten our seat clamp just a little bit. and then use our five Newton meter torque wrench with the proper bit installed and rotate clockwise until you hear a click. Double check that our handlebar is centered with the stem. Most manufacturers provide guidelines for this and then use the proper four, five or Torx T25 bit in our five Newton meter and go back and forth in a crisscross motion until the torque wrench gives us that click noise. Now that we have all of our parts properly installed, we're ready to pump our tires up. First, we wanna remove the cap from the Presta valve, loosen up the valve retainer, install our pop onto the valve, and inflate to your favorite riding pressure. Now that your bike's almost ready to ride, install your pedal of choice to the manufacturer's specifications, and you'll be riding in no time. Assembly should take about 30 minutes to an hour, and if you need further assistance, please feel free to contact us through our website. So fill up your bottles, put on your helmet, and you're ready to ride.